uh, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I really appreciate you tuning in, especially if it's a national holiday for you. Happy 4th of July. Um, I do want to say, if you are celebrating the 4th of July, just take a moment to think about why and what you are celebrating exactly and whose independence are you celebrating? Because um, the first is from one person to another. Um, I want you all to take a moment and think about your earliest memory of reading a book. Nothing too complicated. Actually, if we can all maybe like, I don't know, take 20 seconds quickly in the chat. Uh, everyone just like quickly write down the first sentence that comes to mind. What was your earliest memory of reading a book? I think we can all relate to that very first experience of reading a book, whether the first book that you read was maybe, um, you know, at least speaking in the Arab world, the first book you read was a book of Jahiliya poetry, uh, if any of my Bahraini people remember from high school Arabic, um, whether you are thinking about Fan al Maqama, you're thinking about. Um, but uh, Zaman uh, al whether you're thinking also about, uh, I don't know, maybe some more contemporary writers. Maybe you're thinking about uh, an Am Kachachi, or maybe you're thinking about um, Ali Badr, uh, all of whom are from Iraq. And the amount of wonderful literature and knowledge that is in our hands, that is in our hands as we read a book, whether it's in Arabic, whether it's in English, whether it's in any language that we. Um, that we speak, that we understand. Um, and I also want you to take a moment to think about what happens when a lot of that literature is um, taken away from us. Uh, maybe a little bit of a, of a visual cue here is um, a lot of this literature disappearing, uh, being burnt down, being taken away from us uh, by certain variables, certain forces that are outside of our control. That is exactly what happened on February of 2015 when the University of Mosul in Iraq uh, had its library, the central library, burned down by um, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, uh, or the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Uh, it, and one of the most important libraries in the Arab region and in the world taken down um, taken down by the ISIS for, by ISIS forces. Obviously, this traces its itself way back to um, the fall of Mosul in uh, June 4th, between June 4th and June 10th of 2014, uh, when Mosul fell to the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And today what I want to talk about is sort of what is this act of remembering the things that we lost in the fire, remembering the culture that gets lost in wars, remembering the books that were with us, rarities, books that have been there for centuries. As you know, the Arab region is credited with creating a lot of scientific, mathematical, um, mathematical advancements. Uh, we, like, our, like the Arab world is responsible for a lot of that, uh, for, for that initial uh, literature and what happens when we take away a lot of that initial literature. So I was very interested in learning about um, one of the most important libraries in this region, how in the matter of days, it, the entire collection, uh, a lot of the collection in the University of Mosul's library was uh, burned to the ground. Um, and so uh, we need to start out by thinking about what actually happened, uh, sorry, um, slides are doing a thing. Um, so it all starts out uh, with obviously the fall, of, the fall of Mosul in June 4th, uh, between June 4th and June 10th of 2014, when uh, the insurgents attacked uh, Mosul as an act of vengeance, when the Iraqi army killed, um, uh, killed, the, leader, uh, killed the leader of the, um, of the ISIS forces at that point. Um, if, my, if my research is correct, I think it's Al Bilawi. Um, and the ISIS forces actually fought back and went into Mosul as an act of vengeance for their leader. And they were actually outnumbered by the Iraqi forces, of, uh, Iraqi forces and Iraqi military and the police forces at the time. Uh, some people say that it was around a ratio of 15 to 1, actually. Um, but after six days of fighting, uh, Mosul did fall. The, the Mosul airport uh, was, uh, uh, the ISIS forces took over control of uh, the Mosul airport. And all of a sudden, 
they had military control of the city and led to thousands of refugees um, fleeing the city as a result. Um, now, remembering the actual library at the University of Mosul, it was established in 1921, and it was also almost symbolic of the birth of modern Iraq. It had a lot of books, his, uh, books, historical maps, manuscripts of all sorts of uh, topics, disciplines um, that range from science to law to, art, to the arts to philosophy, um, some of them dating back centuries, some even millennia. Uh, we're talking here about one of the, the prized possessions of uh, the University of Mosul's library was a ninth century copy of the Quran. Um, which was which was lost uh, when ISIS forces burned down the library, um, and again, a, lo a lot of these books were in Arabic. Think about how much original Arabic manuscripts were lost uh, were lost in the fire, as well as contemporary twenty first century uh, books in English. Um, and so, a lot of these collections were lost in the, uh, were lost when ISIS forces burned down. Um, the library. We're talking here roughly around 112,709 manuscripts. Um, we're talking 112,709 manuscripts on, uh, and books. Um, some of them were registered as UNESCO rarities at the time. Um, we're, we're, uh, reports say that ISIS militants actually constructed a huge pyre of a lot of these scientific and cultural texts uh, while some of the university students watched. Uh, due to the fact that they were trying to keep warm um, uh, during, uh, during the cold winter months and um, not knowing the rarity of the books that they were actually burning. A lot of damage was noticed to the Sunni Muslim library, the, the library of the 265-year-old Latin church, um, the monastery of the Dominican fathers, uh, the Muslim museum library. We saw a huge loss to a lot of these connections, as well as Interestingly, getting a lot of the university professors and actually having them rewrite textbooks for a new Islamic curriculum, because um, a lot of the books that were in the collection at the time were filled with things that perhaps were, weren't very, um, weren't very, um, uh, you know, were not very kosher, um, if you will, with uh, ISIS forces at the time. So we're talking about books about philosophy, about culture. Uh, a lot of that had to be rewritten for uh, to be more um, acceptable, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and obviously having a lot of the workers, uh, a lot of the workers in the library locked up in the first floor of the, it, it was a four store, it was a four story building, uh, locking them up and having them print I asked propaganda pamphlets and, and distributing that. So having that be sort of a center of operations for ISIS propaganda. So you can imagine only a, uh, the library going from a place of a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of uh, information being turned to almost this uh, factory of, um, this factory of, of information that, uh, that ISIS wanted to uh, spread out to the Iraqi people. Um, so here's a video. Um, you can see sort of uh, what happened after the, um, the up, tr obviously, uh, trigger warning for uh, our content warning for what is a very brutal destruction of cultural sites and um, important locations in Iraq. So as you can see, this is, uh, this is Tahani Saleh. She, is a, you know, she's a, she was a master's student at the uh, University of Mosul at the time when uh, ISIS took over the city and burnt the library. She was actually one of the first people that spearheaded an effort to uh, rebuild the library uh, and uh, save as much of its cultural resources that were um, saved from the fire, if that makes sense. Um, it is... It's a very saddening video um, to look at. You can see a lot of the books are uh, burnt to ashes. Um, a lot of it is irredeemable. The infrastructure has to had to be rehabilitated, as you can see. Um, and it, it it definitely is um, a difficult watch. She she talks about how this uh, Tahani in the video. She talks about how um, this loss is not just uh, you know uh, something to blame on ISIS necessarily as uh, also something to uh, blame on the international community as well. There are historical uh, events that actually led up to this, uh, that, that actually led up to this, that this has historical um, precedent almost. So we're talking about the burning down of the uh, National Library and Archive in Baghdad during the 2003 Iraq War. Uh, we're talking about centuries, centuries of um, people going into Iraq and burning these 
beautiful, brilliant ma manuscripts that contain the culture of uh, that contain the culture and the knowledge of the entire region, not just the country. Um, and so what is being done, uh, the library is currently in the process of being rebuilt. Uh, actually, um, a lot of a lot of international foundations uh, and, and uh, universities, seemingly a lot of them in the UK is what my research uh, found, um, are actually uh, pitching in in the efforts of free building the library. Uh, a lot of universities in the UK have started something called the Library Fines Foundation. So basically they take fines from uh, people who are late on returning books to the library and they donate those fines to, um, to the University of Mosul's uh, rebuild efforts. Uh, a lot of books were actually saved, which is really awesome. So roughly, uh, so uh, Tahani and her team of volunteers uh, of students from the university as well from the community were able to save roughly 32,000 volumes and were able to move them to a safe location. Um, we're also talking about the book in Aid International, uh, which started an effort to provide books to the library. So a lot of books are being donated from international foundations, international libraries, and being sent. So the first shipment of roughly 4,000 books was, uh, was sent in March of 2018, so fairly recently, um, and the rebuild, the rebuild efforts are, are, are still going on. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a lot of current resources on what actually is being done today uh, to support those, to support those efforts, and in fact, actually, you don't see a lot of news coming out um, about the rebuild efforts of the university recently. However, um, Mosul was taken back by the Iraqi government in 2017, and those efforts have been underway. Um, so maybe a potential topic for a future forward or a feature. Um, and it is important to note that a lot of the uh, books that are being donated right now to the library are in English, when a lot of them in the past were um, in Arabic, French, English, Italian, Portuguese, Kurdish, Turkmen. Um, so many of these books, uh, again, lost, um, lost. Uh, this, is a uh, this is a photo of the volunteers, uh, Tahani is between them, uh, who went in, uh, took out a lot of the rubble, were able to save a lot of the original manuscripts, um, and the efforts are ongoing to this day. Um, there are also news of professors from the university even dancing in the streets when they first got the first shipment um, of books from book, uh, from book Aid International, because it was a moment of realizing that, oh my God, we're actually going to start rebuilding uh, the cultural site that used to be here before it was torn down by, by the war. Um, and so where do we go from here? Uh, again, suggestions for future uh, features or forwards. Um, the destruction of the Iraq National Library and Archive in Baghdad during the 2003 Iraq War. Uh, wondering what was lost there. What were some of the things that, um, that you know, were forever taken out of the archives of history um, when that happened? And also something that uh, was really interesting that I found in my research was that uh, a local report claimed that um, residents saw roughly around 2,000 books being, uh, pu uh, being pulled, put into six pickup trucks by ISIS forces, uh, into pickup trucks that had Syrian license plates. Um, and a lot of those books were sort of uh, driven away, never to be seen from the library before it was, before it was burnt down. So I'm kind of interested in asking where, do, where did those books go? Uh, where are they today? And sort of how can we actually get back some of that culture um, that was uh, that was unfortunately lost. So to conclude, um, there's a very common saying that says Egypt writes, Lebanon publishes, and Iraq reads. Um, and so um, Irina Bakova, who is, the, who is the chairman of the UNESCO um, at the time that all this was happening, um, has this really awesome quote uh, that this destruction marks a new phase in the cultural cleansing perpetrated in regions controlled by armed extremists in Iraq. It adds to the systemic destruction of heritage and the persecution of minorities that seeks to wipe out the cultural diversity that is the soul of the Iraqi people. Um, the, again, this was back in 2015, and we've seen a lot of efforts being done to actually rehabilitate that. But something that I want to sort of leave all of us with is this idea of how does Africa actually fit in and this idea of conserving a uh, culture that is constantly being lost due to variables such as natural disaster, wars, um, things that are out of control of the people that are actually the, the guardians of that knowledge and that culture. Some factors are out of their control. And so for me uh, and for 
us as Africa community in general, uh, part of what I see this work doing is conserving that culture um, and maintaining it in forms of this digital archive um, that hopefully uh, that hopefully will last for years and years to come. Um, and again, it's on us to sort of ask those questions uh, that Africa is asking us to ask, sort of the uh, or not. It's asking us to ask questions. <laughs> um, I'll leave it at that. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's on us to sort of be the guardians of that culture that we uh, very dearly hold on to, um, especially as we face different um, forces that try and rip it away from us. Um, and so with that, uh, please talk to me more about it. Uh, my email and the Insta and the Twitter and all the things are thrown up on the screen. I'd love to uh, take questions. Mm -hmm.